Question 2 asks us to solve four different equations and you can see this one admonition that it is definitely recommended that you verify that your answer is indeed a solution. So once you get an, a value for, I think it's x for each for all four of these, plug that x back into the original problem and make sure that it really does make the left hand side and the right hand side the same. Because if it's not doing that is nice as your penmanship may be or as compelling as all the steps you're showing may be you've made a mistake somewhere and really right the real talent comes in from identifying where a mistake is and then being able to correct that so that's really kind of a good learning opportunity when when you do get a wrong answer so on this first one I'm gonna choose to use the rewriting method right we talked about rewriting and I'm just gonna rewrite the left and right hand side using the distributive property. So I'm going to start with the 3x and then plus 5, but then I'm going to choose to push this factor of 2 into this grouping symbol, right? So at each one of those terms, the term of x and the term of negative 6, is going to get a factor of 2. So it will become, instead of plus x, it'll be plus 2x, and instead of minus 6, it'll be minus 12, right? So each of those got a new factor of 2. On the other side, I've got 3. Same thing, I'm going to push through this factor of, careful, it is a negative 4. And it's going to hit each one of these terms inside. So I'll have minus 4x and then minus a 4. Now, as I collect like terms, over on the left-hand side, I can see that I have 7x's. And, uh, no, that's not 7x's. 3 plus 2, whoa, 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 3 plus 2 is 5. So I have 5x's. Uh, and then uh, 5 minus 12 is negative 7. So I've got 5x minus 7 on one side. On the other side, I've got this positive 3 and a negative 4. And when I combine the positive 3 and the negative 4, that's a negative 1. So this side becomes minus 4x, and then there's a minus 1. Um, let's see. Next, I guess I'm going to add 4x's to each side. So when I do that, um, over on the left hand side I end up with 9x's minus 7, oh, not minus 9, minus 7 and that'll equal negative 1 on the other side and then I am going to add 7 to both sides so that'll give me that 9x is equal to let's see, negative 1 plus 7, I'm adding 7 to undo subtracting 7 uh, will give me a 6, positive 6, negative 1 plus 7 Finally, I'll divide both sides by 9, and I get that x is 6 ninths, which is a fine answer. This does have a common factor. By the way, I don't think I would deduce, to deduct any points for that answer, but there is a common factor of 3, and if I, if I, uh, I could think about it as a, as a giant one, right? This is 2 times 3 in the numerator and a 3 times 3 in the denominator. So when I divide each of those, uh, term, the numerator and denominator by 3, I do get 2 thirds, so two-thirds. X is two-thirds is our solution for A. Um, for B, I'm going to use rewriting again. Over on the left-hand side here, I've got this uh, binomial times a binomial, and we've discussed how we can rewrite those using area models. So I'm going to choose to use an area model this time. Over on the left-hand side, you can see there's an X and a 3, and I'm multiplying that by 2X and negative 1. So if I multiply each of these, I can find the area of all 1, 2, 3, 4 of these different rectangles and combine them. Um, and that would be a way to rewrite this as the sum of the parts here. Up in the upper left hand corner, I have 2x squared. That's a 2x times another x. And then I have a 3 times 2x, which is 6x. Uh, over in the lower right corner, I have a 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. And in the upper right corner, we have simply negative x. Now, two of these are like terms, right? Negative 6, or positive 6x six and, and negative x, and they can be combined. So I'm going to rewrite the left-hand side as 2x squared. And I'm going to do plus 5x. That's 6x's minus 1x. Um, and then finally, minus 3. And over on the other side, I've got 2x squared uh, plus 12. Kind of ran out of room there. Let me rewrite these as x and 3. Okay, so now one of the things that's super nice is I can see that I have the same 2x squared on each side, both the left and the right. They're identical. They're both positive. That's 2x. So I'm going to take away 2x squared from each side. 
and and uh, rewrite. And when I do that, I have 5x minus 3, and that equals the number 12. I think next I'm going to undo subtracting 3 by adding 3 to both sides. So that gives me that 5 times x is 15. And then finally, I'll divide both sides by 5, and we get that x has to be the number 3 again. Recommendation is that you grab a calculator and that you and that you verify that it really is uh, 3. So I'm just going to write here the x is the number 3. Um, for part C, I can see that I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the left-hand side again using the distributive property. So I'm going to push this factor of negative 3 in across these two terms. Uh, when I do that, this is going to become negative 6x, and then negative 3 times 1 is a minus 3. Of course, this will equal 12. If I add 3 to each side, I have negative 6 times x is equal to 15. And then finally, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. So I've got 15 over negative 6, or negative 6 fifteenths. There is a, a giant 1 there, right? 15 is, is 3 times 5. And uh, 6 is, uh, I'll write, negative 3 times 2. So you can see there's this giant 1 of 3 over 3. It's gonna make sure that you don't lose the fact that there is this negative symbol here, right? I, I don't have a negative 3 over negative 3, so I'm just bringing out the uh, the 3s, and I still have the negative left behind. So my answer looks like x is negative 5 halves. I'll write that here, x is negative 5 halves. And then I'll write this over here on the line. The value of x is negative 5 halves. And then finally, the last question in this part is, uh, again, I'm, I'm just pushing this factor of 2 across the parentheses, and I'm really writing the right-hand side. So 2x plus 7 is equal to 2x plus 4, and then plus 1. Notice that I pushed a factor of 2 into both the x and the 2, so it became a 2x and a positive 4. Um, if I subtract 2x from each side, I'm left with a, a conundrum here. On, on the one side, I have 7. And on the other side, I have 5. Well, this is clearly a contradiction, right? There is no way that 7 is 5. So when we, we've, seen, we've seen this before. When we encounter a contradiction like this, right, we have to say that there is no solution. The other thing that could happen is that we could get something that's always true. Uh, we could get something like, for example, 7 equals 7. And if we encounter that situation, what we report back is that the solutions all real numbers, so any real number would be a solution. But for case D, for problem D, there are no no solutions. There's no real number that will make this true, because regardless of what you select for x, you can't turn seven into the number five, right?